David, I need to tell you something. Hey guys, my name is Gavin and I'm the cinematographer here at Peppermint Films and today I'm going to be diving into how we got some of our shots in our latest short film, Oh Susan, The World's Not Ending. One of them being the big finale shot, which I won't spoil it, go watch it if you haven't already. It's the scene where Susan, the main character, reveals the big secret that she wants to tell her boyfriend on New Year's Eve of 1999. And this shot was primarily influenced by a certain shot in a certain movie by Paul Thomas Anderson, Phantom Thread. A great, a great flick if you haven't seen it. Go ahead and watch it. It's a fantastic film. But one shot in particular with all the balloons on the ground, the couple with the spotlight on them. Oh, it's, it's great. We were trying to kind of achieve a similar look to that because we felt it fit the atmosphere of our story. Them being at a party, you know, we got 90s production design everywhere, the balloons all over the ground, people celebrating. We thought it was just a great moment to kind of try to emulate one of our favorite shots. So today I'm gonna be diving into three shots that we did, including that one finale shot, the phantom thread shot, if you will. So yeah, let's dive right in. I guess I'll start by prefacing what kind of equipment we had access to on this set. It was a, an ultra low budget short film. We pretty much just mustered together whatever equipment we either owned or we, or we rented out two or three small lights. And we kind of just rolled with whatever we could. We put a heavy hand into production design, which is absolutely essential for this. It makes just lighting so much easier, composing shots so much easier. Really a game changer that I feel like most student projects kind of miss the ball on. I guess I'll start by getting into our first scene here. It's between Richard and David in the kitchen. They're just kind of talking over life, college applications, you know. So for this scene, we kept a pretty, pretty basic setup using just three lights. Two of them being the little Amaran F21 panels. And we just boom those up on C stands with the arms facing towards the actors and then we kind of angled them inwards at each other and just providing a key and a backlight for both actors. So it's kind of acting as, as a two-in-one package, if you will. And this worked out great. It, it provides a nice like rim light on both of them and they're both getting a, a good amount of key on their face while keeping the background still separated. And then during the scene, I kind of for the close-ups, I was kind of just playing around with shifting the light over however they move. If, if they need, maybe David needed more backlight, maybe he needed more fill, I, I would just kind of shimmy the, the light around or ask my grip to kind of move the light in a certain way. And then just kind of play with taking the grids on and off depending on if, if we're getting too much spill, not enough spill. And for the background, I just put uh, Amaran 200X on a softbox outside that door to camera left that you see uh, with the, the streamers on it. And just kind of blasted that into the door just to light up the extras at the table there. And then also provide a little bit more light to the actual living room itself so it doesn't just look like it's an empty void. <laughs> it is actually the living room. So we wanted to show that a little bit. Not that you really see it, but it just adds something, makes, makes it look a little more realistic. All right, so now I'll dive into our second scene here, which is the car scene. This one I feel like turned out pretty darn good given the given the restraints that we had. We didn't have a green screen, we didn't have any sort of stage to do this on. We literally just took a car, put it in the driveway. It was already nighttime, so we didn't really have to worry about the background too much. So what I did lighting wise for this one was I just took our 600D on a softbox with a combo stand and just put it like probably 40 feet behind the actual car itself, all the way up on that combo stand. So it kind of emulates moonlight a little bit, provides some ambient fill around the car, so it's not just completely pitch black on the outside. And then for the key light for the talent, we had the Amaran F21Cs. Just on C stands, we had one of them directly in front of the car, lighting up Susan, our main talent for this scene. Kind of a red brake light effect on it. We just had our, our boy Quinn kind of adjusting the intensity of the light backwards and forwards as we went through the scene. So it looks like there's cars breaking in front of them and then getting gradually brighter. It also provides a nice key light to her face. And then as kind of an additional like accent slash 
fill. We had another MRN F21X up on the C stand, boomed out. And then we just had a grip literally rotate it <laughs> 360 as we were rolling to just kind of look like there's a street lamp maybe passing by, maybe another car on the other side of the road. And surprisingly it worked. I, I didn't think this would actually work, but it, it looked great. Kind of sells that they're actually moving. Along with, we also had other grips shaking the car to, to achieve the, the rain on the windows. We just took a garden hose and then we just sprayed it out the window with a leaf blower blowing it so it kind of looks like the car is speeding by, you know. We're shaking the car. It, it sold well, I think. Can't really tell that it's just sitting in the driveway at all. I think we, I think we pulled that one off pretty well. <laughs> Surprisingly. I didn't think it was going to work that well. And now the finale scene that we have all been waiting for. The phantom thread shot. Yes. Let's get into it. Okay. So for this scene, production design key. We had the balloons kind of everywhere, scattered them around with selected colors. That was a very big decision in pre-production, but they look great. They're, they're perfect like contrasting colors for the scene. So how I went about lighting this scene, first things first was getting that kind of spotlight, edge light thing for when all the lights turn off. So that again, we used our Amaran F21C, boomed out on a C stand, which you can kind of see in the shot, but who's looking there, you know? Anyways, so we had that boomed over on the C-stand, just kind of right above that Christmas tree in the back, straight onto them, angled straight onto them. So for our other light, we had an Amaran 300C in a kind of book light situation in that back doorway thing that we never really look at, and essentially just bounce it into a shower curtain and straight back into unbleached muslin. Just to make it super soft, you can't really tell where it's coming from, what it is, but it just kind of lights up the whole room in a nice even way. I guess I'll also dive into how we did that flickering effect. Essentially we had all of our aperture lights linked up to the Cytus Link app, and then during the shot, when the director Jacob would tell me, I would hit the faulty bulb setting and have them all kind of flicker on and off, and then kill it right at the right time, leaving the one spotlight the Amaran F21 on the, on the boom arm, just illuminating the two main characters in that final moment. All right, so that about wraps up today's video. Hopefully you guys learned something from it and hopefully it inspired you guys to go check out our new short film, Oh Susan, The World's Not Ending, out now on YouTube. Thank you guys, have a good one.